I'm Rose Salerno. I'm with my uncle Nick Salerno. I just have a few questions for him to ask. I'm down here in Miami. He's showing me around. So Nick, where did you originally grow up? Well, I grew up, I guess, where you grow up, Rose. And by the way, this is the famous song scriptwriter, Rose Salerno. What you laughing for, girl? I'm like, cause you're Speak up. I'm speaking up. I'm just having a good hey, time. Hey, I'm, I'm proud of you. We want we want to introduce you to the world. So, and you're the one, you know, that's giving me the FBI quiz here. Uh, you know, from my upcoming book, Bagman, the uh, you know life story of Amerta. It's all about Amerta, <clears throat> which is what I live by. For all you mama looks out there in Italian, Omerta, right? Is a code of silence. Am I right? Yeah. You know. So um, I grew up. Uh, in uh, Worcester, Mass, okay, you know, outside of Boston. I know you got a bunch of questions for me. I just want to ask you one. What made you decide to get with me? I decided to get with you because I know you're a stone cold OG and I wanted to learn from you. I wanted to experience everything that you were experiencing. Uh, I must be a little old. Is OG like for orange juice? Or <laughs> what, what does OG mean? You know what OG means. Why don't you tell him? No, you tell him. Original gangster, baby. It's a very, very, you know, street term, a polite term. But no, I was born in Worcester, Mass, and my dad, my, uh, very, very influenced by a place called the Black Orchid. I used to watch. <sighs> my dad used to talk about Black Orchid to me all the time. Your dad, my, my cousin Robert, you know what I mean? And I, I think she's somewhere in the background, over in the distance, Dina. Are you there, Dina? Hi, Mom. So, okay. Uh, you, there's surrounding towns like Boylston and Shrewsbury. It's considered Central Mass. And um, my father, my Uncle Danny, they would hang out with, you know, we can show the picture, right? Rocky Marciano, yeah. a lot of famous people, Champ Santello. Uh, my father, my uncle Tony, Gene the Feudus. As a child, what music genres like influenced you the most to start getting into music? And thank you. My, like I said, my uncle Danny, my father, my grandfather, and whatnot. Where and this is where when you know people couldn't vote, and it's tough for me telling the story. But the greatest of all time, like Ella Fitzgerald. The greatest ever to school all you new school people, you know what I mean? And even the old school people, Ella Fitzgerald, Dinah Washington, Billie Holiday. In later years, it became people like uh, Lolita Holloway, uh, Jocelyn Brown, and what's my girl that was on Broadway and whatnot, Jennifer Holliday, not the Fugazi, the other one. But so that, between, you know, a Frank Sinatra, and a Nat King Cole, and you know, the, the big band era. Yeah. So they kept playing that over and over, whether it was Johnny Mathis, or Vic Damone, Al Martino. Yeah. Where was the first place you spun? I just want to play it straight. I learned it. Uh, and one of my best friends, DKB, I love you, brother. Best friends. I, I first met him when I was nine at the Boys Club in Worcester, Mass, on Lincoln Street. And, you know, hey, like I said, this is going to be what it's going to be. But uh, I beat him in a race by half a step. I end up at his house on Eastern Ave in Worcester, and they had a little turntable, and they had all the records, all stuff like Jimi Hendrix, The Temptations, all that. And I started messing with it in the house. And to make a long story short, we would go visit where you're going to school, which is where? UMass Amherst. There's a place, Rashid's, which back in the day they called it a go-go, a club and whatnot. And, you know, they call it discotheques, dance clubs now. It's got all those names, you know, like a rave. Yeah. I actually work at the Green Street Cafe uh, on Green Street in Worcester uh, with Kenny Caprisso. He gave me the name. In 1972, Baby Love, you know, a brother that I'm proud to know uh, because he was gay back then. It's, it, it, I know he's not alive, but that's why I become so big uh, in the gay community, you know what I mean? Uh, just all my friends, like from Jimmy Stewart, the greatest, he was a chemical engineer at MIT, 
the greatest DJ that ever lived, with this guy Tom Moulton, produced him. And so just dealing with all that, I can name all the other guys, Joey Carvello, George Borden, John Luongo, um, Dana Jacobitis, Cosmo Wyatt. Oh, you got them listed. I, I, no, no all, all of them. Uh, B.J. Dean and Worcester Mass, a big DJ. So you learn from all that. And, you know, you, you, I was spinning at B.J.'s Disco. So that led to people discovering me. And in 1976, now I've been living in Florida longer than I was in Massachusetts. Yeah. And I got a job at the famous club in Fort Lauderdale, the button, if you, you, you've got something else you want to ask me. Yeah, okay, so who was the most influential person you ever worked with? I would like to make, name more than one uh, that have had an impact. Number, number one, I want to plug, you know, because we we're at Dreamhouse Studios in Palm Beach, mm -hmm. right? Are you having a great time? Yeah, I'm having a great what, time. What's his name? What, Alex Weir? Yeah, he Alex just, Weir, my man. Okay, did he just not do an amazing photo shoot on you? He did. Right? And, and actually, she's going into, to, as part of Batman, you're going, give me some, Rose. She's going into the recording studio now in a few minutes, and we have no idea what we're doing. But you know what? If you don't try, you ain't going to find out, right? Because she can write, listen to everybody, she can write her butt off. When she contacted me, you know, I mean, uh, I'm saying to myself, what the hell is she texting me? Rose is 12 years old. He thought I was and now old. she's like an old lady. She's 18 going on 50. I mean, she's unbelievable. 50? My mother's 50. Oh. I mean, Oh my God. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Your mother, I saw a birth certificate when I was on my way up here. She's only 39. Oh. That's on, on camera. That's, that's the truth. In my life, by far, the number one influence is my grandfather. We have the logo, right, that we use on the record we did with African Mbada. Um, Nicola Salerno Ciani, he came from Italy in 1912. Without a doubt, the most influential person in my life besides that, as far as music, without a doubt, Stanley Kirk Perel, PKA, right? Professionally known as MC Hammer. And then many other artists, like I said, in the studio, African about as many years. And um, I could think of uh, so many other people. There's just uh, so many other artists, but those are two that have had a profound effect and made my name and my career. But there's, it, you know, we'll show up, we'll play the music. It'll be in the book. But I just want to mention in that the five big CEOs that you'll eventually meet. The people that I revere, like Morris Levy taught me from Roulette Records, Neil Bobagard from Casablanca, a little bit Armin Erdogan from Atlantic, um, my man uh, that wears the hat, sits with Jack Nicholson, but most of all, Henry Stone, you know, Casey and the Sunshine Band and all that. Henry Stone, and we got, I took a picture of him, he just passed, he was 92. Henry, like my grandfather, really influenced me because he taught me one thing, Rose. You know, you see this cap I got on? I'm proud to be from Boston because we dominate New York. You hear what I'm saying? So, you know, my point was Henry taught me one thing and that's what Bagman's all about. Never mind that, you know, you take no prisoners, you act like a gentleman, and you don't let anybody disrespect you, but the most important thing is, it doesn't matter, Rose, what they're saying about you, as long as they're talking about you. Yo, what's the deal, it's your boy Wild Man Teddy T. I'm all here talking about the bad man. Y'all know who the bad man's about, right? Nick Baby Love, that's Nick Baby Love Salerno. That's my mentor, man. I remember, man, 1984. You know what I'm saying? He bought two lives from the West Coast straight to Miami. A lot of people ain't aware of that. The two lives crew, David Hobbs, Chris Wong Wan, two Miami, introduced them to Jerry Russian. Jerry Russian said, I just know the guy who y'all need to get with, which is my other uncle, Uncle Luke. I've actually brought David Hobbs and, and Chris Wong Wan, yeah. Fresh Kid Ice. Yeah from California, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they had that record and went through all that. A record promoter in uh, Florida, in Miami, I should say, he got a hold of our record and uh, gave it to a guy that I became good friends with, a guy named Luther Campbell. A lot of people know him as Luke Skywalker. 
So uh, he really liked the record and he felt like, you know, at the time he was a concert promoter, he figured that if he got the record hot, he could bring me and my other two compadres down to do some shows. But at the end of the day, Nick Salerno played Connect the Dots to get me here to Miami, Florida from uh, California. Then obviously I was fortunate to go through the whole Bambana thing, which is in a documentary, you know what I mean? He's a good friend of both of ours. No, 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 we gotta knock it down. Big baby love. Brother Africa, Bambaka, Universal Zulu Nation, the Armorah, Universal Hip Hop Culture. And I met you in 1980. We worked from a pay phone and there was no such thing as CDs. We worked from vinyl and Dude, we played 45s. There was none of this anything, you know what I mean? We never we had a cassette. And the drum machine was just invented. That's right. We were in a studio, you, nobody in this room will even believe it. You know, with John Roby. They won't even believe the people. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Arthur Baker, who I went to high school with. Tom, you follow me? They don't even know about Jelly Bean dating Madonna in the studio. Jelly Bean Benitez, that's right. There, there you go. We broke the record here, and it got so hot. Remember Jerry Russian, right? He played it three times on the turntable. Yes, sir. And it was so funky. And it definitely, definitely caused uh, many frequencies and vibrations to everybody around the planet, brother. But all of it is electro funk. Miami bass, the Rio funk, the Florida breaks, the Bali funk. The, uh, what else they got? The, the electronica, all the different styles. All part of the electric funk style. Great one down here who, who really took it out there and with yourself, you know, the mighty, mighty loop. He might have did it on the nasty tip, but he took it out there. And, and there we go. Nasty we, as they want to be, two life proof. Pretty total. Master. You know what I mean? Trying to use a statement in the year of our Lord, 1982. You know, we fought like warrior poets. Yep. It's real, man. It's all about Omerta. See, I got quiet. That's what it's all about. Omerta! It's that code, man. It's that code of silence. It's what got us through the game. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what we learned from the beginning. It's infrastructures. You know what I mean? There's rules and regulations. You know what I'm saying? So, from a long time ago, you know what I'm saying? Uncle, Uncle Nick told us, man. It's all about the code of silence. You've seen but not heard. You move in silence. So, you know, that's that's how we come up. You know what I mean? You know, and, and, and Unc came through, you know, in 1981, 82. You talk about non stop to the planet rock. What? Don't stop. Uncle Jerry Russian was a DJ, and he just kept bringing it back for seven minutes each time. He paid it for a good 28 minutes because he bought it back four times. You know what I'm saying? Four times seven, that's 28, right? I don't know, but it's like that, you know what I'm saying? Uncle Nick, man, did big things, man, going up. The bag, man, is important because, you know, now I became even the drop man, you know what I'm saying? The bag man's the dude who dropped the jewels, you know what I'm saying? The drop man, the bag man, it's the evolution of the game from the inside, you know what I'm talking about? For MC Hammer to Kano, the list goes on. Nick Baby Love, the bag man. Y'all know what time it is, man. He did this, man. He do this each and every day. Still, he blind, can't see shit, but he know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? That's my aunt. Nick Baby Love, Solano, the wild man, Teddy T, man, the prodigy. Nick Baby Love, Solano, from the streets to radio, 99 Jams, Part 96. They say I'm a living legend, but that's because of my mentors. You know what I'm saying? Frank was a coaster. Alan Johnson, and of course, Nick Baby Love Shalano is going down right here. You know what, matter of fact, I'm gonna let Nisi take over. Rose, go ahead and keep this thing going, man. Nick Baby Love, it's all about America. So as a cancer survivor and someone who is legally blind, what keeps pushing you forward? Like, you'll never, will you ever consider retirement? Are you kidding me? Retire? Never. If you stop moving, you stop grooving people. So it's people okay. like like all the young artists. I just met a young boxer today. Yeah. You know, what was my man's name? Rudy. Rudy, see you will remember it, all right? Maybe he's gonna do Rudy too and star in the movie too. But I happen to know different people like Freddie Roach. We'll throw his picture up there. Um, but you know, bottom line to that is you gotta keep going. 
Um, many families have people with cancer and you just gotta keep it moving. And like I said, I love the fact that if I'm such a nobody, if Nick Baby Love, why do they still keep talking and hey, You know what I mean? The moral of the story is for Bagman, and like I said, Rose, thank you for, you know, just hooking me up here. Some incredible questions. I'm telling you, we're gonna put you on the map, girl. You're gonna do it yourself, and I'm just gonna be there, you know, by your side, you know, with the rest of your family, you know what I mean? At the, at the end of the day. We're still family. La Familia. There you go, yes. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, really, the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter what they're saying about you, as long as they're talking about you. Please, in the future, go out and enjoy the book. Coming soon, everywhere, Bagman, The Life of Omerta, which is the code of silence, how I gotta live by, by myself, with my lovely niece, Rose, here, helping me out. Uh, her first time on a major camera, by yours truly. God bless Nick Baby Love Salerno. Peace out.